And then uh, what I'll do with this recorded video is I will post it also in that same place. It'll be underneath the Zoom meeting. So you'll have access to all uh, examples and stuff that I work. So now, uh, oh, what I'm saying is that uh, I've seen all this stuff about uh, Zoom bombing and uh, actually let me, I think if I do it through Microsoft Word, uh, I can save that file as well. So let me, instead of using the whiteboard. For the final exam, is it just gonna be um, chapters 13 and 14? Yes, you got it. So it's um, so they, they got rid of test three, but they, they really didn't get rid of test three, they just moved it to the final. They got rid of the comprehensive final. Uh, okay. So be testing on the new stuff. Um, 13 and 14. And as you'll see, I'll give you a few examples. It's really, it's, it incorporates what we've been doing, but we do it sort of backwards. So okay. um, it's a, the harder part, you know, because going backwards is a little bit harder, but at the same time, you're going to emphasize, uh, reemphasize everything we've been doing uh, before this as well. So let's Little see. crow, is it your birthday today? No, it was uh, my birthday on Friday, but thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Happy late birthday. Thank you. It was a weird birthday. It didn't feel like a birthday, but you know, mm -hmm. nothing feels real anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're living in this virtual world. I just forget what it's like. Okay. Um, so, what we're doing, um, is, uh, what we did before, we would be given a function, and let's go with something like 3x to the fourth minus 2x to the third. You can see your screen. Oh, thank you. Keep me honest here. How's that? Is that better? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, and we'll just do a, a plus 57, whatever. So this is, I just made this up. So if we've got this function, what we've been doing uh, before this is we were going to take its derivative. So I'm gonna do that first and then I'll show you this section basically takes the underivative. Okay, so. When we took the derivative, what did we do? Well, we subtracted one from the exponent. Well, actually, what we did first is we took the exponent, brought it down front, and multiplied, right? And then we would subtract one from the exponent. So the derivative here would have been 12x to the third. And then we just did it term by term. Take the exponent, multiply it by the coefficient, and subtract one from the exponent. So this one gives us minus 6x squared. And on the last one, whenever we had a constant, when you take its derivative, it's 0. So we could have a plus 0 here or just not put anything, right? Because zero adding 0 doesn't do anything. So that's how we took the derivative. Um, and what we're going to do in this section now is we call this little f. Okay. So what we're going to be doing is what we're going to do is we're going to start with little f. So we're going to take the integral, which that's supposed to be an s, because they started doing these with uh, summations. We don't do that, all that stuff. You do that in the, uh, the sort of physics-based calculus but it's got this sort of S shape, that means integrate instead of, the, uh, instead of the prime for derivative. And what we do is we're gonna take the integral of little x, of f, little f of x dx. So what that looks like, we're gonna integrate, say 12x to the third minus six x squared, um, dx. 
And what the answer is going to be, let's see, here we go. Try to get you admitted. And I apologize, anyone coming into the, the waiting room, um, I'll try to recognize you as soon as you're in there. If you, if you all see somebody, just holler out. Okay, so what we want to do is the answer to this should be what we started with. So when we integrate, we're doing the same thing, except in the opposite order and the opposite thing. So instead of subtracting one, we're going to add one to the exponent. Instead of multiplying by the exponent, we're going to divide by the exponent. Okay, so let me just give myself some space here. I'm going to, and what we can do is we do it again, term by term. So I'm going to integrate 12x to the third minus 6x squared. They always have that little dx to show that this is a derivative. Um, so what we do is... Hey, I have a question. Sure. Is saying dx the same thing as doing f1? You mean like uh, f prime? Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Is this, sorry, no, is no. this like antiderivative though? It is, exactly. They call okay. it the antiderivative. I, to me, it's more meaningful to call it the underivative uh, because anti means against, or is one meaning, but it also means opposite. So this is the, op so we're getting back to the opposite, which is, uh, Again, all we're doing is we're going to get back. You're going to see we're going to get back to the answer we started with. But the process is important. So what we did is we brought the, the exponent down. So up here, uh, with, with the, when we took the derivative, we took the exponent down and multiplied, and then we subtracted 1. So when we take the integral, what we're going to do is first we're going to add the 1. Instead of subtracting 1, we're adding 1. And then we're going to divide by this new exponent, 3 plus 1, which is 4. For this term, uh, the second term, we're going to do the same thing. We first add 1 to the exponent, and then we divide by that new exponent, 2 plus 1 is 3. So our answer is going to be 12 divided by 4 is 3 x to the fourth power. Notice that's what we started with up here. Minus 6 divided by 3 is 2 x to the third power. But notice we're missing the 57. And there's no way to know or to get back to that 57 unless we have um, unless we have a, a point on the graph or something, which we don't in this case. So when we're taking this, what, what's called the indefinite integral, and again, you'll see this in the video, I take you step by step, I go through similar examples, uh, but that's all we're doing. Uh, so since there's a potential or there, there was a constant here, we don't know what it is, we always put a plus C on the end, okay? And the cool part about this is we can always check whether we've got the right answer. I have a question. Yes. Is it, sorry, is it plus C, like even if we know there wasn't a constant though, like what if there wasn't a constant, we still write plus C regardless? There's always a constant. Okay. It could be plus zero. It could be in the invisible constant of plus zero, but yes, oh, there always okay, will yeah. be. So I that's, got you. yeah, I know. Good question though. Good question. So yes, winning that C takes into effect that there's, there's no constant or, or that the constant were zero or that it's any other number. So what we get is we don't really get one answer. We get a whole family of answers as we change the value of C. Um, and then you'll see, Later on, what we do is we're given a value of x and y that is a point that's on the graph, and that's what allows us, we plug that in, and that's what allows us to figure out what c is. Okay, but one more step, we can always check. What we do is we take our answer and we take its derivative. So I'm going to take the 3x to the fourth. Its derivative is going to be 
um, change colors here just to show you that I'm in the sort of the testing mode. Four times three is 12. Subtract one from the four, we've got three. Hey, that's the 12 X to the third. That's what we, that's what our integral was. When we take this derivative, three times two is six. So that gives us six. Three minus one is two and the constant is zero. Notice we're able to check our answer because when we take this derivative, we get back to what we started with. Okay, so in a sense, this one's, uh, this is good because again, we are working backwards, which is hard, sometimes harder to do, but then we are able to take its derivative and make sure that they match up. And that's the basis of this one. Um, here, and I, I don't know if you remember, but in, in the very early parts of this class, I said, if you know how to add, subtract and add one, uh, you'd be doing great. And that's really all we're doing is we've been subtracting one from the exponent and now we're gonna be adding one to the exponent because we're getting back to what we started with. Um, can anyone think of anything? Uh, there's two, the two things that would be different than, than getting the integral this way. What are those two things? What was that? Um, there's two types of functions. Let me be more careful. There's two types of functions that would be that we would have to approach differently than adding one to the exponent. Anybody? And if not, what about the special case? Yes. What would be the special case? Uh, look at my notes. Okay, good, good, good. The special case is when the exponent is negative one, right? So if you had x to the minus one, because if you add one, then you end up with x to the zero, which is just one. Um, special case. Okay, so if we're going to integrate x to the minus one, which is also one over x, right? We could one over x or x to the minus one is the same thing. Uh, does anyone have a guess on what this is going to give us? Uh, square, uh, never mind. You're on the right track, not square roots, but natural logs. Because remember when we took the derivative of natural log, what did we get? One over x. So notice we're starting here, we're getting back to what we started with when we take the integral. This is one you just kind of have to memorize. There's, you know, I didn't add one, I didn't really do any manipulating, it's just the, it's sort of like a fact. It's Plus like, five. yes sir. Um, so you're saying the antiderivative of one over x is ln x? You got it. Okay, thank you. Ln x. Now, they might, they'll, they'll probably put this as absolute values. And the reason is, is because you can't have negatives inside of a natural log. I just, I like to approach it by just saying, let's just restrict the domain. Uh, obviously, you know, the X can't be zero. It also can't be negative, but uh, as long as you do that, yeah. And then remember, there's always the potential. There could have been a constant or there always is a constant. It might've been zero, but so whenever we integrate, in, with an indefinite integral, we always have this plus c, so that when we take its derivative, we get back to where we started. Okay, so that was one special, that uh, is a special case, natural log. Does that, uh, there, there's a sort of a companion case um, that kind of goes with natural log. Does anyone remember what that is? Another sort of special derivative. Um, I had a question. Uh, uh, I'm e to the x. You got it. E to the x. Perfect. Uh, what was the question, though? So if it is x to the negative 1, is your answer just ln x plus c? Yes. Yes. So the, the same thing as if we had this. Your answer is ln of x. And the plus c is sort of like it's not part of the ln. It's out here. Yes. Okay, thank you. Good, good. And so the, the other special case, and once we're done, this is basically everything in this unit, 
Um, and then what I would, would suggest is try some of the homework problems on your own. Um, and then we can, we can answer questions about them on Wednesday. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of be able to do double duty. We'll see that the next one is just, is going to get some more integrating. Um, but if we want to, first we look at what is the derivative of e to the x. It's e to the x. Okay, so this one is, is kind of, and then the other one is say like we had two to the x. Remember when we take this derivative, we get natural log of two times two to the x. So we get the sort of this correcting factor. Okay. So this one, if we're going to is take- Is this still the, plus c's though, or does that still apply here? It will. So what I'm doing now is the, I'm taking the derivative. When you take the derivative, you don't need the plus c, but when you integrate, so you'll see this little s curve. When we integrate, that's when we get the plus c. Okay. Okay. So since the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, when we go backwards, the answer, the integral is also going to be just e to the x. Again, think, uh, thank you, Jacob, it's plus a c. So this would be the answer to the integral of e to the x dx. Okay. And what we do is later on, we'll look at how to deal with things like the, uh, the chain rule in reverse. That's, that does get a little complicated, but we've got things called integration by parts, and uh, we got some techniques for uh, things that get more complicated. But at the beginning, it, this is really as easy as adding one to the exponent and then dividing by it for most cases. We've got this one special case with the natural log, and then we've got exponentials. Um, and so if we're going to integrate 2 to the x dx, so this is any other x, this is any other exponential except e, um, what we get is the answer is going to be, as you can see, it's going to be 2 to the x, it's going to be itself, but notice to when we take this derivative of two to the x, we get this coming off. So what we have to do is divide by natural log of two. Okay, so think of, because it's backwards, when we took the derivative, we, we multiplied by natural log of two. So when we integrate, we're going to divide by the natural log of two. Okay. Again, these ones, you just, you, it's one of those things you have to, just sort of remember. Let's see. Has anyone else come in? I think everybody's here. Okay, so those are really the three cases. And, and primarily, if you look at the, the homework, you'll get a lot where you're having to integrate these. And again, add one to the exponent, divide by that. Um, you'll get a few of the special cases, and I think there's one or two of the exponentials. And then there's two applied problems, which I do work in the PowerPoint as well, all the way through. And I'm just going to ask, those ones really are not going to be as meaningful until you try some of the initial ones. And then so I think we can deal with those last two ones that are a little bit more complicated. They're not really all that bad. It just has the extra step is they give you uh, they give you one of the points on the graph so that we're actually able to calculate what C is, but most of the other ones don't. Um, but you'll I think you'll be able to see through there, and um, yeah. Can we try uh, the negative five? The negative five. But integrating negative five? Uh, someone just asked in the chat. Oh, thank you. I can't, when I go to share the screen, it doesn't show up anymore. Let's see. I'm gonna stop the share. Thank you, okay. Yeah, yeah. If you look at the homework, Jacob, okay. We can do, okay. Yeah, negative five dx, perfect. Uh, very good question. Let's go back to the share. Where is this? 
Uh, I'll put it up here. Okay. So the question was something like integrating negative five dx. So if one thing you could think of, how would we have gotten a, something to be the derivative of negative five? You might remember, well, that would be negative five x. Um, but I'll show you how you can also think of this. This is really the integral of negative five x to the zero power. Remember x to the zero, anything to the zero power is one. So x to the zero is, one, is another way to write one. And now watch how this will, will flow right you don't really need a special case for this. Zero, what we do is to, to integrate this, we add one to the exponent, right? We do that first, and then we divide by this new exponent, which is one. So what our answer, I guess I should have put the dx there, what our answer is going to be is negative five x to the one power divided by one, Again, always plus a constant. And then it just simplifies down to minus 5x plus a constant. So you might just remember this one whenever we have just sort of a, a, a number without an expo uh, without a, a variable on it. Uh, our answer is just going to go right to here. I like to remember this because it, it makes it everything fit in that really we're just adding one to the exponent. It's just in this case when the variable is invisible, it's invisible because it's x to the zero power. Add one to it, divide by the, the new exponent, which is one, nothing really happens, but uh, that's how we're gonna get that one. Okay, I'll come back just to see if that, so did that, did that kind of help with that special case? I hope, again, it, it's a very simple one, but it's also one of those ones that uh, if you didn't quite understand that that was x to the zero, those are the ones that are so hard, you know, to get a handle around because it just seems like, well, it seems like Little Crow's making up his rules while as, as he goes. Um, I mean, that's how I felt doing a lot of this calculus, uh, especially e to the x is still one of those things that just doesn't feel right that something would be its own derivative, but it is. Um, and uh, in this case, when we have sort of, we're, we're integrating a constant, integrating a number, uh, we always get x to the first power. Uh, Mr. Little Crow? Yes, sir. I'm assuming that there's no difference when the variable is u versus x. You are correct. Yeah, they just use a different letter. So everything at this point will be the same. Now down the road, they have a, uh, you'll see one of the sections is called substitution. And what they do is they use u to stand for a whole function, just to simplify. But um, yes, uh, whether they call it u or w or, or x or y or uh, whatever single variable they're using, everything will be the same. Uh, in this initial part. And then later on, they'll start using U in sort of in a special way. Um, I don't know, I don't know where the U comes from. It might maybe in like, some of these things is remember a lot of this, uh, the calculus was, uh, um, uh, what's his name? The British guy who had an apple fall on his head, Newton. Uh, he was one of the guys that came up with the calculus and the other guys was uh, Leibniz, which is German. Uh, and so a lot of the things were developed by the Germans differently. And, and so their letterings and stuff uh, are based on the German language. Um, and so if you know German, you'll, you can sometimes make, it's, it's more understanding why they use the letter U's and, and those kind of things. But for us monolanguage people, uh, a lot of times we're just in the dark. <laughs> okay. Can, can we practice one with a radical? You got it. Oh, they got one with the radical. Sure, sure. Um, let me make one up here. Let's see. Let me just get a new sheet. Uh, and let me remember to share my screen before I get too far, right? Okay. So like with the radical, um, I don't think they get too... Um, 
maybe just like Radical X, is that about as far as they take it, or, or Radical U? The one on my homework says uh, 15 and then Radical, but it's like the Radical of three, so not two of normal. Okay, okay, so that's a good, uh, thanks. So we'll do, uh, we'll, we'll try that one, 15. So it's a, a cube, or a, what do they call it, a cube root. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of X, or we could use U. Okay, so first of all, this has got what they call a constant multiplier. So the 15, we really don't have to worry about. What we think of it is just the 15 could become outside the radical. We'll do the radical part. We'll get this answer and then we multiply by 15. The key part is, is seeing that this radical, uh, this cube root, is really a, um, a fractional exponent. It's x to the one third power. Okay. And so now, how do we take this integral? We add one to the exponent. And when you add one to, uh, when you have a, a fraction, the form of one we want to use is actually what we want to add is three over three. That's another way to write one, but that gives us a common denominator. So whatever the denominator is here, let's just go three over three. So that is going to give us four thirds. And then remember, we have to divide by that new radical, or uh, sorry, the new exponent, divide by four thirds. And then remember, we've, and then there's a constant. And then the 15 is still here on the outside. So this, so far does that part make sense? Add one to the exponent, divide by that new exponent. Yes. Okay, good. We're not done yet, though, because now the, what's what's weird is we've got this uh, x to, in the top, and in the denominator, we have a fraction. How do we deal with that? Um, well, think of this fraction bar here as a divide, and so what we're going to do, this is x to the four-thirds divided by four-thirds plus a constant. And when we divide, we flip the fraction, right? We take the reciprocal and multiply. So this is going to become 3 fourths. So it's 15 times 3 fourths x to the 4 thirds plus a constant. And then uh, what WebAssign is going to want you to do in the last step is take this 15 times 3 over 4. Um, 15 times 3 is 45 over 4 x to the 4 thirds plus a constant. So that should get it to you. So it's, it's kind of getting back. Um, I think the other part I told you guys, besides adding one and subtracting one, is a lot of times the hardest part of the calculus is all the algebra you have to remember to get there. And this was uh, this radical uh, cube root is we had to remember that it was the one third power. That was back in, in algebra days. Um, so there's a lot of these types of things that take a simple thing of just adding one and then dividing by that uh, and makes it more complicated. Makes it, you know, because you have to have all this, uh, these connections and, and know where to start. But radicals, just think of their fractional exponents, turn them to that fraction, add one. And again, in this case, we added three over three. Had it been a fourth root, we would have added four over four. Um, and then the algebra part of dividing by a fraction, flip and multiply. How's that? Did that work? Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay, good, good. And just to kind of let you guys know that um, it's in the video a little bit, but what we have the freedom to do is uh, they've given us, because we've taken out a test, we've, we've basically changed our syllabus. We've taken out test three and the final. Actually, we took out the final because the final will become test three. 
Um, so it's not going to be comprehensive. But what that did is if you didn't do real, if you didn't do well on the first two, it, it and, and if we were to kind of equally weight everything now, it puts greater emphasis on those first two. Um, what we're going to do is we, I'm, uh, you'll see, I, I'm going to be able to calculate the grades in, in two to three different ways. And then um, it will depend upon whether you did well on the initial ones, but maybe on the third one, you didn't do so well. Hopefully you're all just, and I think it's so far, you'll do much better on this last one than the other ones, which is is what we're hoping. Uh, or you struggle, you didn't do as well on the first two as you'd like. Uh, we can make the last test more heavily weighted so that it can pull up your grade. Um, but this is a, a first option where we've got an official sanction to basically calculate it two ways. If, so if you do well and it pulls up your grade, we'll, we'll calculate in a way that it pulls it up as high as possible. If you don't do well on the last test, we'll calculate the grades in a way where we, we even things out so it won't pull it down as much as it might have. Um, and so that we're able to give you a higher grade uh, we're able to calculate multiple ways and give you the highest grade. Okay, so and again, I, I ran through a, a basically with a 60 average. Um, you can still get a B in the class on the the first two the way this is, and if you average another, if you keep at what you've been doing and, and you average 60 on the third test, you still end up with a passing grade. Um, and again, you'll have to just kind of uh, look at it and. Uh, Awesome. Uh, you'll have to look at your individual situation and um, and I'd be happy to help you with that. But that's also in the video. Uh, it's Again, it ended up being 17 minutes, so you may not want to see it. Um, and those of you who are interested in skydiving at the end of the lecture, I got a little bit about uh, air resistance and, and uh, gravity pulling you down. I thought it was kind of interesting. You might not be interested. It's okay. Uh, there's a part I tell you, you can skip this if you're if you're not interested, but if you are, uh, I added some extra stuff and there's a video you can watch. So um, let's just see. Is there anything else? We're about the last 10 minutes. Um, the main. Oh, that's my Siri trying to help me out, but I don't need her. Not now. Any questions, comments? Thank you, Professor Lilacro. My pleasure. Happy birthday, by the way. Well, thank you. Getting older by the day, right? We all are. <laughs> hey, Lilacro. So uh, I'm looking at 13.1's homework, and <clears throat> one of them has 4 over x minus 1 over 2x to the fifth plus 1 over 3x to the seventh um, in parentheses. Could you go over one like that? Okay, could you read that back to me? Four over X? Yeah, four over X minus one over two X to the fifth. Okay. Plus one over three X to the seventh. Awesome, you got it. Let me... Uh... Will this be the last problem that you do? Uh, it might be. It, um... If you've got another, if another one comes up, I could probably squeeze one more in. Okay, and, and again, Wednesday, we will have the chance to, to go over more, um, and that'll lead us right into 13.2. So when we have exponents in the bottom, what we want to think of these as negative exponents. So, and, and did I get the integral right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so what we do, now you'll you'll notice this is our special case one. It's x to the minus one or or one over x. So um, actually, what we can do, and I'm going to put this minus out here, is break it up and kind of this is actually three different problems. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as one half x to the minus five. Now that's the thing is when we've got x negative exponents, only the thing with the x one that goes up, the two is going to stay down in the the basement. Uh, plus integral, and again, I'm going to move x to the 7. I'm going to move that up to the top, so this is going to be one-third x to the minus 7. Okay, and there's some dx. So it's like one-third times x minus 7? 
Yes. Or if you wanted to, you could write it as x minus seven over three. Those, those are equivalent. Um, I'm just gonna write it out here, say that this x, you know, that this is a constant multiplier. So you, you whatever, your final answer will get multiplied by one third. So shouldn't the first one be four x negative one then? Or you could. Um, so this could also be written as four x to the minus one. I like to leave it here because when I see it as four over x, I remember that that's going to be the four is a constant, so that's four times natural log of x. I remember that this is gonna be natural log of x. When I write x to the minus one, I'm tempted to try to add one to the exponent. Uh, but you could do either way. Whichever way you see this, just remember this is the special case, x to the minus one or, or something over x is just gonna be natural log of x. Okay, and then, as we go through the rest of these now, we're gonna add one to the exponent and then we divide by the new exponent. So negative five plus one is gonna be negative four. And that's where it gets a little funky. What I'll do is I'll just like, you know, move the one half out front, move this out front, we'll deal with it later. Um, and then this one, we're gonna add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent, which would be negative six. Okay, so what this looks like, notice I've got, I'll do this minus, I'm gonna bring the one half out front, and then this part is just x to the minus four divided by minus four. This is plus, and I'll just bring the one third out front. This is now gonna be x to the minus six. Makes it a little cleaner over minus six. And when you see this, it, you'll start seeing how it's, yeah, if, it's, if the exponent's minus four, I'm dividing by minus four. If the exponent's minus six, I'm dividing by minus six. And now I just clean it up. The first part is just four, natural log of x. This one I just got, I've got a negative times a negative, that gives me a positive. And then I've got two times four in the denominator, that gives me eight, and x to the minus four in the numerator. Now if you want, you can bring this back down and make it a positive exponent, but this should be okay as far as answers is, is what I see. Then I've got a positive times a negative, that gives me a negative, three times six, that's 18, and then in the top, I still have x to the minus six. So that you'll, you'll see these where they give you those, you'll get the negative exponents. And with negative exponents, um, again, they don't start off negative, but bring them to the top, they're negative. There's just that one special case of uh, either one over x, or x to the minus one. That's the one that's gonna give you natural log of x when you integrate. Oops, did it backwards. How's that? Did that? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Why did it go from minus to plus? The final product being um, minus x to the six over 18? Why did it go okay. from plus? So we had a negative here, but remember, you're dividing by the exponent. The exponent was negative six, so we're dividing by a negative six. So we had a positive and a negative, which it uh, gives us, yeah. And and again, watch that. I On some of the tests, I, I was able, you know, again, because I do review them, I'll catch those. But uh, it seems like WebAssign, if you have the sign wrong, it wasn't giving any credit for those type of problems. So some of you went from zero to nine points instead of, you know, it was like out of 10, that one. And if you didn't have the negative, I said, well, that's one error. I could see it in your work, uh, but watch those negatives. It's, uh, again, it can, especially on these automatically graded things, it can just say, nope, not right. And all you're off is, is by a negative, but, um, so yeah. And then this first one was positive. And, and sometimes those are easier to see because you had a, a negative and a negative. So that results in 
changing to a positive. Good, good. But there's a lot going on, and I know there's a lot of things to keep watching on it, uh, but you still have to keep track of all these little details. And it's frustrating when you're like 95% there, maybe sometimes 98% to the right answer, but you missed off by a negative and you get nothing. And, and you think that you didn't understand anything when you actually understand most of it. Okay. Do you think we have enough time for one? Sure, we can do one more. I don't see my record here. Let's see, am I? Oh yeah, I'm still recording, good. Uh, what would you like to take a look at? Um, so the one is asking the integral for six over u plus u over nine. Six over u plus u over nine? Yes. Okay. And then, of course, instead of dx, it's going to be du because we're just using this variable of u. Um, again, what you want to do is sort of just separate them out. I'm going to take this 6 as a constant number. Let's just bring it outside. This is 1 over u. And again, you could write that as u to the minus 1. But uh, for me, I remember that that's going to be a natural log. What I'm going to do is this is 1 over 9. So I'm going to bring it outside. And then I'm going to write u to u to the first power. Always having that exponent there is going to be helpful. So again, this one, the first part, just remembering that 1 over u integrates into the natural log of u. And then we've got the 6 on the outside, so it just tags along for the ride. So sometimes that's the hardest part to remember, but it just is what it is. That's what my brother always said. It is what it is. I said, okay, I like to use that. Um, over here, what happens is we've got an exponent of one. Just remember the process, add one, divide by the new exponent. One plus one is two. So this is going to be one ninth times u squared divide, oops, one ninth. I said it right, I just wrote it wrong, right? So the hand doesn't follow what the mouth is saying over two. And so to clean this up, it's just going to be 6 natural log of u, u squared over 9 times 2, which is 18. Oops, what did I forget? Plus C. Awesome. Uh, that was one of the, th and, and my, I had a teacher, uh, you would lose points every time that plus C, and a, a large number of points. So I, plus C. I, in fact, I, I think I would have that tattooed on the back of my hand, plus C. Um, but we, we get as we get down, we start getting more information. We don't need to use that C because we'll have enough information to figure out what it is. Um, and that's the usually the real world situation because plus C, if, if that's all we have, we really can't do much with this, can we? Uh, the big difference if C was, uh, uh, yeah, let's see. Looks like we got one more. If I pay for a plus C tattoo. <laughs> uh, no, especially at this time, it's probably not a good time to get uh, tattoos. I, I, can, I can refer you to a, a previous student of mine uh, who does tattoos. He does great work, uh, Hector. Uh, he's downtown Phoenix somewhere. I see, uh, I, he's on my Facebook, so I see the kind of work he does. He does some really nice, he's an artist. So he, you know, anyway, if you want a tattoo, go see Hector. He'll take care of you real good. Uh, but maybe a hint of tattoo, so it'll come off later. Plus C, yeah. All right, thank you guys. Take a look at the lecture video. Again, you might wanna fast forward it through um, this afternoon after I take a little bit of break, um, get my mind going. I'll get 13.2 up for you so that uh, by tomorrow, you'll be able to review that, and then Wednesday we'll come back and we'll put we'll put 13.1 and 13.2 together, and we'll we'll just again a lot of this is just practice, 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 and and see that we really we've got the basis for all of this stuff. I just I'm really hoping that we can just all rock this last test and get some amazing grades. 
So amazing grades, not amazing grace. Uh, a little different. Anyway, take care, guys. Uh, stay safe. Still dangerous out there. And uh, oh, let me show you my new mask. My wife made this one for me so I can go out in public occasionally for grocery shopping. And again, if you want to leave, you can leave. But uh, I thought it was just so cool. This was my birthday present uh, to get it the right way. So this is this is how I go out in public, but not often. I just go to the grocery store. So there, yeah, there it is. Nice clown. I just the, the bozo nose should be a little higher, but you know, hey, she did. It, it's just how the pattern is. And I guess I just didn't have a big enough face. So. Let go there. Awesome. Thanks. Stay that? safe. Protect yourselves. And uh, you know, have fun. We gotta we gotta connect and, and all that stuff. So peace out. Take Thank care. You, we'll see you all on Wednesday. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, bling bling. That's what uh, we call this. Thanks. Oops, I'll let me end the recording.